I am Biji George, your host for the virtual event, where we have our partner school, Sudesha School from Nepal, along with Modern School Nagpur, an attempt to connect students for global learning. From our partner schools, we have the principal, Ms. Birangana Maharjan, coordinator of the school, Mr. Agni Prasad Tamilsena, and the head of the department for social science, Ms. Binda Thapa. I welcome you all this morning. I also acknowledge the presence of Mrs. Niru Kapai, Director Modern School and Principal Ms. Rupali Te. A hearty welcome to both of you too. British Council provides the participating partner schools an opportunity to build and sustain international collaboration to enhance the development and broaden the horizon, to exchange information and create an exciting new learning opportunity. One such activity included preparing a booklet or a brochure on Indian traditional methods for developing immunity against viral infections and present it to the partner schools in Uganda, Nepal and Bangladesh. This is true in the reverse order for the participating schools too. And to learn about the traditional immunity booster methods of the countries under study by discussing with partner schools through the Google Meet sessions. So every country takes up the traditional method for developing immunity against viral infections in their own way and presents it to the partner schools. In our attempt, we are coordinating with Sudesha School Nepal and Modern School Nagpur in India to present the booklet and the brochure. This brochure in a PPT making activity was given to the students of Standard 9 in both the schools. And now it's time to peep into their presentations. So first, I would request the students of Sudesha School for their PowerPoint presentations, one after the other, as has been decided by the school. It's over to Sudesha School, Nepal. Okay, thank you, ma'am, uh, for your wonderful welcome and uh, background information on uh, the British Council and the program that's going on. So, uh, yeah, we are going to kick off then. So, Arya is ready with her presentations. Good morning to everyone present here. I am Arya Dokal from Shudesha School. So, today on this program, I'm going to be sharing my presentation on effects of lockdown. So what is lockdown? A lockdown is a restriction policy. It is a restriction policy for people or community to stay where they are, usually due to a specific risk to themselves or to others if they can move and interact freely. Lockdown can also be used to protect people inside a facility or, for example, a computing system from a threat or other external event. In buildings, doors leading outside are usually locked so that no person may enter or exit. The first lockdown implemented during COVID as a preventive measure was in Wuhan, January 2020. Despite the extension of the lockdown for two months, the increasing number of COVID cases in Nepal has threatened the livelihoods of people, affecting various socio-economic aspects such as education, occupation, social relation, physical and mental health conditions. Uh, effects of lockdown Lockdown can limit moments or activities in a community while allowing most organizations to function normally or limit moments or activities such that only organizations supplying basic needs and services can function normally. The COVID pandemic has taken a devastating toll on hundreds of millions of people across the globe but it is the children and families who are being hit hardest by the economic crisis caused by the pandemic. The supply shortages were expected to affect a number of sectors due to high demand, increased uses of goods to fight the pandemic, and disruption to factories. Nations, cities, and other collectives with governance mechanisms worldwide have announced the development and implementation of programs for guided economic recovery. Economic effects of lockdown in South Asia. As you can see in the following chart, there are the growth at constant market prices in the South Asian countries from 2019 to 2021. Uh, next slide, please. So here you can take a minute to read effects of lockdown in education. 
According to a UNESCO report, 1.6 billion children across 191 countries have been severely impacted by the temporary closure of the educational institutions. The COVID-19 school uh, un university closures have a negative impact on students, knowledge, and skills development in Nepal. Education has been technologized. Going to school physically is the best public policy tool available to raise kids. While school time can be fun and can raise social skills and social awareness from an economic point of view, the primary point of being in school is that it increases children's ability According to research, online studies have not been conducted effectively due to poor resources. As we all know, the educational and occupational future of students depends on their outcome. Effects of lockdown mentally. As the coronavirus pandemic rapidly sweeps across the world, it is inducing a considerable degree of fear, worry, and concern in the population at large and among certain groups in particular, such as older adults, care providers, and people with underlying health conditions. Many of us are facing challenges that can be stressful, overwhelming, and cause strong emotions in adults and children. Public health actions such as social distancing are necessary to reduce the spread of COVID-19, but they can make us feel isolated and lonely and can increase stress and anxiety. Lockdown has caused various mental effects like low mood, irritability, stress, anxiety, insomnia, emotional exhaustion, anger, depression, and post-traumatic stress symptoms in many adults and children especially adolescents children are being pressed uh, so here are some solutions for the effects of lockdown lesson watching listening and reading to news about COVID-19 that leads you to feel anxious or distressed get up to date at specific times during the day only once or twice attend different webinars and awareness campaigns related to mental health that so you can somehow get knowledge regarding various measures to decrease the stress and anxiety avoid news that bumps you to sudden anxiety or distress Meditation, exercise, and doing yoga really helps to reduce stress and anxiousness and also increases positive vibes in an individual. Read positive and hopeful stories of the people who have recovered from COVID-19, their experience related to love, affection, and care are given to them by different healthcare workers and their loved ones during the period of infection to recover. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you, Arya, for your wonderful presentation. Uh, now we have uh, Mona Lisa Sakya to present on the traditional remedies used in Nepal to deal with, uh, with the COVID-19. Good morning, everyone. Presented here. Uh, it's me, Mona Lisa Sakya, representing Sudesha School. So I'm here to tell you about the traditional remedies which were used in Nepal during the COVID. So we all know. Uh, we all know about the COVID and its impact. Previously, my friend Arya has already told you about the impact of COVID in our life, uh, in our lifestyle. So, but still, there is no any confirmed medicine to cure it. Many researchers, biologists, professors, and many more are still working on it to find out the medicine. But in the context of Nepal, the study found out that the use of medicinal plants has been increased during the COVID-19. That means the Nepalese people are making the traditional remedies by themselves at home in order to prevent COVID-19. It is said that more than 80% of people in Nepal are using traditional remedies during COVID. So talking about the background of traditional remedies, to make the traditional remedies, uh, medicinal plants are used and it is also known as homeopathy, Ayurveda, folk medicine and so on. Medicine plants are the primary source of health care for the people in Nepal and are, uh, and are an integral part of their culture. 
The Nepal government has also valued medicinal plants as an immunity power booster used with prescriptions. Since an ancient time, medicinal plants are being used to cure diseases and even for making the many products, uh, we all know that, it has been also playing an important role in increasing the economic level of Nepal as Nepal uh, export medicinal plants to different countries in the world. To know more about the traditional remedies, the elder people who are living in the rural areas or the villages uh, areas have more knowledge about it. So the traditional remedies used during Nepal used during COVID in Nepal. So people are it is said that people are obtaining obtaining a medicinal plant to their garden about 50, 45.61%. And market uh, thirty two point zero three percent and jungle or or other surrounding ten point seven three percent. It has been also said that about forty seven percent forty seven forty seven percent of growing or cultivating medicinal plant has been increased during COVID nineteen than before. So the commonly method to use uh, to prepare the traditional uh, remedies is to green the part of the leaves, seed, stem, root, or etc. of the medicinal plant, and then boil it with hot water or the milk. So here are some of the uh, medicinal plants: its name, its habitat, uh, the part which is used to prepare traditional remedies, and the mode of use. For example, like Malabar nut, which is also known as Asuro in Nepali, it's a serve and the part which is used to make traditional remedies is its leaves and we can use it as raw or we can make it powder or we can even uh, boil it with water and use as traditional remedies. Similarly, you can go through it or uh, you can go to other medicinal plants and their uses or the mode of plant, mode of use. There are also the um, uh, uh, medicinal plants it's used it's uh, it's part to use and so on you can go through it so how to prepare the traditional remedies there are many natural cures and herbal uh, remedy ideas floating around the internet and in health stores currently we are not aware of any remedy to cure COVID-19 so don't be fooled by the miracle treatment some people are trying to sell even so, here there is a simple remedy which is prepared in every Nepalese ha home to fight the disease and to strengthen our immunity. So I'm going to show you about one of the traditional remedies which is commonly used in Nepal. So to make it, uh, first we have to boil the water in a pot, then take some ginger and peel off its skin, then wash the peeled ginger and make ginger paste by grating it grinding it, take the paste and add it in the boiling water, then take a pinch of turmeric powder and also add it in the boil water uh, in the boiling water and then add some honey in the drink and let it boil for the few minutes. Finally you can uh, you can pour the water in a cup and drink it as an energy drink. Likewise there are many methods to prepare remedies using various uh, medicinal plants. So thank you, that's it. Thank you all of you for your attention and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Mona Lisa, uh, for your short presentation on the remedies of uh, COVID-19, the traditional remedies, uh, the herbal, Ayurvedics, and all these traditional stops, the medicines and so on, uh, that we can use as the alternatives of some other, you know, the, uh, prescribed medicines to you know fight against COVID-19 uh, especially in this condition even up to now we haven't completely been certain about what exactly cures it so certainly these these points are always important for everybody else even when they suffer from the, the massive pandemic um, so we have a third very short presentation this will be a very short presentation by Kushi uh, it will be based on some some posters Good morning everyone present here. It's Mukushi Lama representing Sudesha School. So today I am here to present the posters made by our fellow mates on the topic traditional remedies of COVID-19. So traditional remedies or medicine comprises medical aspects of traditional knowledge that developed over generations within the folk beliefs of various societies before the era of modern medicines. 
So similarly, as shared by our previous presenters, we students of grade 9 have made some of the posters related to the topic. So they are, they are presented here. These were the posters, so thank you and have a wonderful day ahead. Okay, thank you, Khushi. This much from our side. I think uh, we have all been done interested. Uh, so let's let's get to the morning school side then. Thank you, Arya, Monalisha, and Khushi for your informative presentations. Surely the pandemic has helped us uh, go back to our roots and understand the traditional ways of treating diseases. Now, this has created more awareness on the importance for cultivating these medicinal plants on a larger scale, just as Mona Lisha had shared on the screen. And uh, just as uh, Agni Prasad sir also confirmed that we still do not know what are the right cures for COVID. So it's better that we depend on these traditional methods, which are in no way harmful, but at least would try to in, uh, increase the immunity of every individual. Thank you so much, Sudesha School, for your presentations. Now we move on to the students from Modern School Nagpur from the state of Maharashtra in India. And the first presenter is Master Parv Jain. Good morning to one and all present here. I am Parv Jain from Class 9, Modern School, India. Today, we are all gathered here to discuss about the traditional remedies of different countries for boosting immunity and the country of my study is India. First of all, what is immunity? Immunity is the ability of a body to fight or resist against diseases. And we all have well understood the importance of immunity in this crucial time of pandemic. Our immunity can be boosted by certain vitamins and minerals such as vitamin C, zinc, iron, and so on. They are found in a variety of plant and animal food items. Oranges are rich in vitamin C, which is really good for our immunity. My own city, Nagpur, is famous for oranges and thus is called the Orange City. Now, as we all know what is immunity, let's move on discussing some traditional remedies for boosting immunity practice in India. Though there were many of them, I managed to list some of them before you. They are turmeric milk, kara, pranayam, yoga, and Ayurveda. Let's discuss about the turmeric milk first. Turmeric milk is a natural antiseptic which makes it excellent to consume with milk. It is loaded with n number of nutrients and dietary fibers which makes it very good for our digestion and increases our blood circulation. An interesting fact that India produces nearly 94% of the total production of turmeric in the whole world. Next, I come up with kara. Kara is the Indian traditional drink often consumed as chai or tea. It can be prepared by using ingredients such as clove, ginger, lemon, tulsi, which is also known as basil, and giloy. It is a really good immunity booster, which is really good in curing sore throat and cough. The presence of tulsi makes it an effective healing drink that reduces mucus in our body. And during this COVID, the whole world made the use of it. Next, I come up with prana. Pranayam is the ancient practice of India in which we control our breath. We inhale, hold our breath and exhale. This can be done in different styles and are named specifically. Some of them are Anulom Vilom, Kapal Bhati and Brahmi. They really boost our enhance our respiratory system which is really important because we, as we all know that COVID directly attacks our respiratory system. Next, I come up with yoga. Yoga is also the ancient practice of India. It is really good for lowering stress hormones and keeps us mentally and physically fit. It also helps us to reduce fat. As we all know, fat is the starting of many other dangerous diseases. And the Prime Minister of India also encourages the practice of yoga. In 2014, he declared 21st June as the International Yoga Day and the whole world respects it. At last, I come up with Ayurveda. Ayurveda is the Indian traditional system of medicines which is used since long. It includes herbal remedies, exercise, meditation, breathing and physical therapies. During COVID, when 
homeopathic and allopathic remedies were not so effective. Ayurvedic remedies were quite effective in reducing the impact of COVID. Some benefits of adapting Ayurveda are it reduces stress, increases our immunity, reduces inflammation, lowers blood pressure, cholesterol, and symptoms of illness and diseases. There are some remedies which are proposed by Ayurveda. Some of them are Chavan Prash, breathing exercises, physical therapies, and many more. I want to tell you about Chavan Prash a little briefly. Chavan Prash is a mixture of many Indian spices but and mainly gooseberry. It is also known as Amla. It is a really good immunity booster which, enhance, which increases the amount of white blood cells in our body. With this, I come to an end of my presentation. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you, Pal, for all the insightful information that you have shared with us. Next, we move on to Master Aman Kumar. Mind is not a vessel to be filled, but fire to be ignited. With this wonderful quote, I wish you all a very good morning. I am Aman Kumar, studying in class 9th of Modern School, Nagpur. I am here to present to you all a digital booklet or a brochure on traditional methods of Nepal to develop immunity against viral infections. So first, I want to tell you all what are remedial medicines. Remedial medicines are medicines which are usually given to a person without doctor's prescription and are easily available at our homes or can be easily prepared at our homes. These medicines are given to a person when a person is suffering from very common diseases like common cold, flu, fever, etc. The first remedial medicine is Besar Dood, which is commonly referred as the turmeric milk. Turmeric milk is made by mixing turmeric powder in milk. It can also be consumed by mixing turmeric powder and water. It is a highly beneficial spice which is e easily available in all our homes. It contains many antioxidants. Turmeric is widely used in India for various rituals like the haldi performed in India during the weddings. The next is karma. It is a native of the Indian villages and it is widely used in its neighboring countries like Nepal and Bangladesh. It is made by Simple ingredients like ginger, garlic, turmeric, asafoetida, holy basil and several other herbs and spices. It was even prescribed by WHO to consume kadha at least once a day. It is beneficial in increasing immunity. Ginger is a major ingredient in kadha. Now let's talk about ginger. Ginger, which is also known as aduwa in Nepali language, is commonly used by people of Asia and Africa as a remedial medicine. Ginger with honey is a natural painkiller. Its raw consumption helps in curing nausea and diarrhea. But overconsumption of ginger causes heartburn and gas problem. Ginger is also used in making of Chavan Prash. Now let's talk about Chavan Prash. Chavan Prash is a cooked mixture of sugar or jaggery, honey, ghee, Indian gooseberry jam, which is also known as the amla jam, sesame oil, berries, ginger, garlic, and various other herbs and spices. It has been used in India and its neighboring countries since ages. It is highly beneficial for our health. It is prepared as per the instructions suggested in Ayurvedic texts. As garlic is used in the making process of Chavan Prash, it also contains antioxidants. Garlic is known as Lasun in Nepali language. Garlic is also a very common remedy used by people of Asia for several types of flu and respiratory diseases. Garlic contains very less amount of calories. It can be consumed raw as well as in roasted way. Now, I would like to conclude my presentation and say thank you to one and all present here for cooperating with me and have a great day ahead. Thank you, Aman. After Aman, we have Manasvi Rawat. Wishing you the best for the day ahead, I, Manasvi Rawat from Modern School, Maharashtra, India, presently studying in 9th. The country presented is India. India is one of the oldest civilization in the world, witnessing the fusion of several customs and tradition which are reflective of the rich culture of the country. Having diverse languages spoken, festivals celebrated, people united and having a lot of variations in their dressing, living and being healthy. India has one of the world's oldest medical systems. It is known as Ayurvedic medicine. Ayurveda. Ayur in Sanskrit means life 
and Veda means science or knowledge. Thus, Ayurveda is the science of life. It has evolved over thousands of years ago. Now, the world is realizing the importance of Ayurveda and the natural components. Some frequently used remedies in India to fight against COVID-19 are turmeric milk or water, chavan prash, giloy, garlic raw or roasted, tulsi. For turmeric milk or water, adding a pinch of turmeric into a glass of lukewarm milk or water and mixing it well. Then a healthy drink is ready. Drinking turmeric milk at night is said to be more beneficial for our health. The main component of this turmeric milk or water is turmeric. Turmeric is a powerful antioxidant. It lowers down the cholesterol and triglycerides in people. The scientific name for turmeric is curcuma longa. It belongs to the ginger family, Zunje Baresi. There are some interesting facts about turmeric. In the Indian state, Tamil Nadu, which produces turmeric on a very large scale throughout the world. Hence, it is also known as Yellow City or the Turmeric City. Did you know that the country is the largest producer as well as consumer of turmeric? An ancient Ayurvedic formulation is Chavan Prash, which is used for boosting immunity. It appears as a brown colored jam which contains berries, jaggery and various herbs and spices. It is widely consumed in India as a dietary supplement. It also helps in the production of hemoglobin and WBC, the white blood cells in our body. The main component of this gooseberry jam is the Indian gooseberry also known as Amla. It detox detoxifies the body and also cleanses the blood liver, spleen, and the lungs. It enhances in youthfulness and helps in shaping muscle mass and tones our body. Some facts about Amla is that it has a lot of flavor in it. It tastes sour and astringent, etc. Did you know that, as per the Hindu beliefs, the Lord Vishnu and Lord Shiva inhabit Amla tree in the day of Amla Navmi. The tree is also worshipped to maintain good health and prosperity. Over centuries, Giloy has been used to treat various medicines as an Ayurvedic medicine. In many cases, Giloy which worked as an immunity booster during this pandemic. Scientific name given to Giloy is Tinosphora cordifolia. The most interesting fact about Giloy is that it helps to reduce the most common aspect of this pandemic, that is, the stress and anxiety. It even helps to boost up the memory, becomes excellent when taken with other herbs and calms us down. Middle Asia is the native to garlic. Eating garlic provides many health benefits including improved immune function. It also prevents from common cold and flu. Scientifically, it is termed as allivium sativum. Very wondering and spooky fact about garlic is that it is used to fight off the evil spirits and keeps vampires away. According to the old Christian myths, Eastern European folklore and many more, they believe that garlic fights off evil spirits and have their own stories on it. Do you know that garlic is also used to make glue? Tulsi is beneficial in religious as well as economical field. It is termed as holy basil. It is consumed as medical tea, typically known as kadha. It is also added in to herbal and green tea. In the tradition of Hinduism, the devotees worship tulsi plants. It is scientifically termed as Osimum tenuflorum. Some facts about tulsi is that it is worshipped in two varieties. The tulsi plant having green colored leaves is the Lakshmi tulsi and the tulsi plant with purple hued is the Krishna tulsi. Did you know that every year tulsi is wedded as a marriage ceremony of goddess? It is a bit similar to the normal Maharashtrian weddings. You never know how strong you are until being strong is your only choice. And on this positive note, I Manasvi Rawat conclude my presentation. 
thank you so much for listening thank you manasvi for that uh, interesting presentation uh, earlier aman had taken us to ne- to the country of nepal and its traditional secrets of developing immunity we now have arya wasnik and let's see which country she takes us to honorable principal respected teachers all the academic aspirants and my dear friends a very good morning to one and all it is said coming together is a beginning keeping together is progress and working together is success with this positive note i miss arya wasnik student of class 90th of modern school nagpur india feel highly privileged to deliver my, my presentation on a very exclusive topic entitled traditional method of developing immunity against viral infection in uganda at the very outset i would like to extend my deep sense of gratitude to our most revered principal for giving us the opportunity to deliver our presentation under the banner of renowned british council also i extend my thanks to my teachers who are my guide and mentor for their constant motivation to enable me to deliver my presentation as we know that we are facing a very crucial phase of pandemic due to which the entire mankind is full of chaos and fear it is the responsibility of every citizen to abide with the rules and regulations to cope with this massive pandemic keeping a strong immune system is a primary need in a pandemic period in the presentation i would deliver a talk on how to curb the deadly virus by traditional methods of making medicines by the people of uganda without much ado i move towards my presentation i begin my presentation with the introduction of uganda a country endowed with natural plantation and healthy environment uganda is famous for making traditional medicines to boost strong immune system and curing other viral infections by natural herbs every country is blessed with some natural habitats pertaining to its geographical conditions similarly uganda is a country blessed with blessed with lake kyoga dense forest rich with medicinal herbs it is very interesting to see that the people of uganda from their wide experiences and knowledge about the herbs came out with an idea that the herb scientifically named aloe verbendesis common name aloe vera which can be used to cure malaria fever skin disease for stop bleeding scar removing and used as dewormer for preparing this herbal medicine first fresh leaves are boiled in the water for about half an hour this liquid is given as medicine to child and adults according to the prescribed doses another interesting plant scientifically named dracaena stridnerei common name dragon blood tree this is used to cure viral infections due to cough and syphilis this herbal medicine is made by drying the leaves of dragon blood tree then it is burned into ashes A little amount of lake salt is added to the ash. It is given to the patient with adding little boiled water and salt mixture to the ash. Another exclusive plant scientifically called as Hostundia oxeta with common name bird gooseberry. This plant has medicinal value to give appetite to a patient who has recovered from fever. The people of Uganda with their wide with their experiments with with herbs found out the way to make the Make make this unique medicine. First, they boil the fresh bird gooseberry leaves in water in traditional earthen pots. This liquid is cooled and strained and is stored in containers. This herbal medicine can be given to the patient with proper doses for speedy recovery from fever. The people of Uganda investigated a plant scientifically named Integrofolia. and communists to cure from fevers caused by viral infections they prepared this medicine by boiling the leaves the steam of this boiling water is inhaled by the patient by recovering with by covering with cloth it is also prescribed that the same drink is cooled and used for bathing and drinking as well the people of uganda after a constant searching in the deep forest found a very significant plant named as bidens pilosa with common name as black jack The medicine prepared from from this leaves is used to cure malaria, fever, headache, cuts and wounds. Great is the art of end beginning and greater is the art of ending. With this optimistic note, I thank you very much for patiently listening and giving me this prestigious opportunity to be the part of the program. Thank you so much. Thank you Arya for that uh, informative presentation from Uganda. Next we have Sanskruti Deshmukh and let's see where does she take us to 
संस्कृति देशमुख यस मैम गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन माय सेल्फ संस्कृति देशमुख फ्रॉम स्टैंडर्ड 9 आई एम फ्रॉम मॉडर्न स्कूल नागपुर महाराष्ट्र ऑफ इंडिया I am going to tell you on the topic of five traditional methods for developing immunity against viral infections in Bangladesh. Bangladesh it is to the east of India on the bay of Bengal and it's a south asian country marked by lush greenery and many waterways. The first immunity boosting medicine is Xylocarpus mollusensis. In Bangladesh, diarrheal diseases affect thousands of people every year and children are especially vulnerable. Its bark is astringent and people in Bangladesh use it traditionally against dysentery and intermittent fevers. Its seeds and the oil from its seeds are given as an astringent agent against diarrhea. Also the ripe fruits has been used against diseases of the blood urinary losses and stones in the urinary tract next is ficus religiosa it is commonly known as people plant it is very helpful for treating asthma for it people in bangladesh prepare a powder of bark and fruits of the plant separately and then mix them together in equal quantities They consume this mixture thrice a day and get relief from asthma. Next is in a stem of banana plant which is known as pseudo stem. It is commonly known as thor in Bangladesh. They mix cardamom with the juice of banana stem which relaxes the bladder and helps in preventing against painful kidney stones. Also drinking a glass of pseudo stem juice with few drops of lime juice mixed in it every day prevents the formation of kidney stones also it is very useful in relieving discomfort and pain caused by urinary tract infection next is rose apple it is commonly known as gulab jam eating some amount of rose apple daily helps in controlling diabetes prevents cancer helps in digestion etc and mainly it boost our body's immune system it contains great amount of water and some amount of fiber so it treats bladder infections it is very important for improving our heart health next one is sugarcane it is mostly known as ak in bangladesh taking some amount of sugar juice sugarcane juice or chewing it regularly helps in fighting with infections and boost our immunity as well because it is rich in antioxidants it is great for dehydration as it's rich in iron magnesium calcium and other electrolytes Also it helps to cure common cold and fights fever as it boosts the body and protein level with this i conclude my presentation thank you and have a wonderful day thank you sanskruti for that wonderful presentation the final presenter from modern school nagpur is arya shrivastava good morning everyone i am arya shrivastava studying in standard 9th modern school india Today I am going to discuss about the traditional medicinal plants used to boost immunity in Uganda. Uganda is a landlocked country in East Africa. Its abundant wildlife, snow-capped Rwenzori mountains and immense Lake Victoria proves the beauty of nature that encompasses Uganda. We know traditional medicines have long been used in all the countries to increase immunity of humans. These traditional practices have used properties of herbs, fruits, spices etc to prevent and treat many diseases when the covid-19 pandemic struck our world as there was no medicines no cure available to fight it people all over the world started search in all different fields in african traditional medicines ethnomedicinal herbs are considered for good prevention treatment and management of influenza and other respiratory diseases let me tell you about few of them Euphorbia hirta has no anti-SARS coronavirus activity but has a good activity on respiratory problems which is a major symptom of coronavirus. Onyegi highlighted in his studies that Euphorbia hirta can alleviate some of the respiratory symptoms associated with COVID-19. Glyceriza glabra, commonly known as lycoris, is a herbaceous perennial herb native to Northwest Asia. but is widely cultivated in north and south africa the roots and rhizomes of lycoris are used in egypt 
to treat upper respiratory disease like common cold, bronchitis, and sore throats. Garcinia cola hackle, commonly known as bitter cola, is an evergreen perennial medium-sized flowering tree that is indigenous to Central and Western Africa. It has been observed that bitter cola has anti-SARF COVID inhibitory potential and is listed as a plant with promising result against coronavirus. A man may esteem himself happy when that which is his food is also his medicine. With this sentence describing the essence of traditional immunity boosters, I end up my presentation. Thank you. So those were the presentations from the students of modern school in India. We now have the question and answer session and I would request the students from both the schools to uh, ask the questions. Students of Nepal, the first opportunity to ask the question. Is there anybody who would like to ask a question to the students in India? Okay. Anybody from modern school who would like to know anything about Nepal or would want to pose a question? Yes. Parv Jain has raised the raised his hand and followed by Srijit. Okay. Wait at that. Parv will be asking the first question. Please unmute yourself, Parv. Yes, ma'am. My question to my fellow mates are, is what are the general factors leading to different types of viral infections in your country? Who will take that answer? Teacher or the students? Who would like to answer that question? Ma'am, we throw garbages in our surroundings. Yeah, we throw garbage in the surroundings. Okay, who answered that? I think it's Deep Asnani. Yes. Okay. Anybody from Nepal who would want to give more insight into it? It's about viral influenza or any kind of you know spreadings that uh, that we face, uh, especially these sharp communicable diseases. Uh, that uh, have been quite prevalent especially in developing countries like ours you know we uh, in, in southeast asia and so on uh, generally we, we suffer a lot uh, from these communicable diseases the difference between you know these these developed uh, modern nations and the underdeveloped and developing countries uh, have been as it comes to the health issues you know the difference is like um, the developed countries the people of developed countries you know uh, suffer more from these non-communicable diseases and uh, the people uh, of developing countries suffer more from these communicable diseases so they have their different uh, factors but as it comes to uh, our country i think the most important thing is it's about uh, the awareness i think that's that's the most important thing it's it's really important to be aware of you know very simple stuff like washing your hands regularly maintaining the distance then after you know using masks sanitizers in this case not only in this case uh, but even when you know uh, we we try to stay away from this kind of viral influenza. I think use of masks, you know, maintain a physical maintenance of physical distance, and then after uh, this this kind of answer from Nepal, either the use of these uh, medical hubs and so on uh, that can boost your immune system. I think these stops are quite important. But the problem is, you know, people lack the you know the awareness uh, about these stops what exactly can happen to them and the other stuff as uh, one of the students from their state here is about the environmental sanitation i think that is the that is one of the very important aspect about the health i think uh, as it comes to uh, communicable disease and their uh, speedings and so on thank you agnesa once again for giving that uh, wonderful answer Right. Uh, now, in the next segment, we launch an awareness drive demonstrating strategies to deal with the current pandemic in coordination with CMCA, that is the Children's Movement for Civic Awareness, through video clippings, pamphlets and posters on virtual platform. So uh, now Master Aman Kumar from Modern School will give you the details regarding CMCA. It's over to Aman. You don't need to be successful to take risks in your life, but you surely need to take risks to be successful in your life. With this wonderful quote, I, Aman Kumar, student of class 9th of Modern School Nagpur, Maharashtra, India, hereby carry forward today's session with the topic, Strategies to Deal with Current Pandemic. COVID proved a proverb that never underestimate someone by his or her size. It literally made the mightiest human beings get locked in the house. But the easy mantra to be safe from this virus is SMS. It's not short message service, but it's sanitizers, masks, and social distancing. And that's all. 
एज आर ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर श्री नरेंद्र मोदी सेट आपदा में अवसर ढूंढना एक बहुत बड़ी कला होती है यू शुड ऑल्सो हेल्प योर सेल्फ टू एनहेंस योर स्किल्स टू फाइंड द रियल यू एंड मेक योर सेल्फ काम क्वाइट एंड थिंक दैट वॉट मेक्स मी द बेस्ट आई सी मेनी केसेज दैट ड्यूरिंग द पैंडमिक द पीपल हु सफर्ड फ्रॉम द फेटल कोविड नाइनटीन वायरस पैनिक एंड थॉट दैट इट्स एंड it's the end of their life but doctors counselors and policemen are spreading a message that all you need to do is keep hope and be strong and literally that's the best thing but how to deal with the trauma the depression the anxiety faced by the students and the people during this pandemic this must be the question which will arise in many minds but before you ask me let me tell you that there are many such organizations that offered many activities to help children and the people to enhance their skills during the pandemic one of them is cmca do you know the full form of cmca it's children's movement for civic awareness cmca organized many programs for children and youth to enhance their skills and to deal with the current trauma and depression faced by them cmca distributed activity books to the children who were studying in the schools in the rural areas helping them to enjoy and learn new things counseling programs for children depressed by this pandemic cmca often uploaded the videos of magic cap stories on its official youtube channel which included citizenship values and promoted critical thinking in the children and online sessions and workshop for the children to interact with each, with each other and learn basic life skills and there were many more cmc has set up a true example how an ngo should work during the pandemic now i would like to show you all some ppts and posters made by my friends and classmates all the cmca club members have made the posters and ppts as part of cmc activity for the british council ids program I am presenting before you some of the selected one. A beautiful presentation by Siddhi Bambal. In this slide she is conveying strategies to control COVID-19. This slide points out the ways to cope with stress and fear experienced during the pandemic time. PPT by Muhammad Farhan Sheikh. Farhan has proposed ways towards developing a positive mindset. a beautiful presentation by arya shrivastav this is manasvi rawat presenting her work sufyan's posters showing preventive measures a beautiful poster by kanad dahake and that's me and my poster Now I would like to call upon Kanad Dahake to share his experience being a part of CMCA club and the further proceedings of this session will be carried out by BG ma'am so stay home stay safe and stay smart over to you Kanad good morning to one and all present here my name is Kanad Dahake and I am from class 9th a of model school Kurati Road Nagpur India today I will be telling you about my experience and what I learned in CMCA CMCA organized many activities and projects which helped in improving my creativity imagination and knowledge like for example their poster making activity on strategies implemented to control covid-19 pandemic for which we had to make a poster on the plans that can be used to control and fight this pandemic this activity helped us to understand and come up with ideas that can be implemented during the pandemic secondly cmca has also conducted many online sessions on how to deal with depression trauma and anxiety 
which is the problem faced not only by school going children but also by everyone due to the current pandemic also there are magic cap stories which were recommended by our teachers that i saw on cmca's youtube channel these stories gave good moral lesson and asked questions about social problems which are important to resolve and that's it from me and i would really love if you all also got motivated and become a part of cmca now i hand over this program to bj ma'am she will further host the program wonderful encouraging note from kanad uh, we come to an end of our virtual program the beauty of such collaborative programs is the ability to come together across borders and get to learn more about different cultures and people and i'm very confident that such interactive programs would help these students across india and nepal to communicate global issues and maybe even find solutions in the near future so time now to propose a vote of thanks and i take this opportunity to thank each one of you who collaborated and participated in this event thanks especially to the partner school sudesha school its principal coordinator and head of department of social science for your cooperation thanks to the principal and director of modern school who have been always a source of inspiration for all the activities thanks to all the students who participated actively with their presentations thanks to all the teachers who took the initiative to motivate the students to participate and the students who took uh, who participated and uh, made and the others who made a perfect audience too so till we meet again for our next collaborative event let's keep take efforts to keep ourselves safe through this pandemic thanking you all once again thank you so much